This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring former FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, Robin Dreek. Alec Murdoch on the road to a new trial. Wait, what's this? The judge said no. That doesn't mean it's the end by any means. In fact, this is really just the beginning of probably a very lengthy appellate process. But we started somewhere, and we started with evidence. We started with a juror flat out saying, yeah, Becky Hill influenced my decision. Yes, she said these things to me. And yes, it did affect the outcome of what I voted for in the guilt of Alec Murdoch. But Judge Toll still said, nope, not enough. Here to discuss, Robin Dreek, retired FBI special agent. Robin, were you surprised um, that that this is how it, it all played out the other day in court? I was a little surprised, actually, because I think Becky Hill really overstepped, way overstepped what she should and shouldn't do in, the, in her position of trust. But at the same time, though, my initial impression I had was relief. Yeah. I, because, I mean, you would hate for a righteous conviction to get overturned or to be retried because of one fool that mm-hmm. did things that she shouldn't have done. So I was really happy with the system. Um, I'm so glad it was a new judge that did this and not judge Newman. He recused himself. You know, we're seeing such a difference. I think in the system down in South Carolina compared to Delphi where, where we have two, two trials or, you know, one potential, you know, upcoming trial in Delphi where we have a lot of things going sideways in that whole system. And every week there's more sideways stuff. There's more craziness and Mm -hmm. and we're trying to write that ship. But down in South Carolina, where it looked like, again, our conjecture from the outside looking in where Alec Murdoch and his whole cabal of people around him for and his family for his entire life kind of ruled that system we're like oh man is he going to get away with this you know is he seemed to know everyone that is kind of an inside job and you know someone's going to be there at his defense and say all these nice things but once again it looks like the system is working and that gives us trust and confidence in that system whereas you have an individual that makes a mistake you know becky hill made Hill, um, Becky Hill made numerous mistakes um, with her conduct, but the system is playing out and not ruining, I think, a righteous conviction. And that's, I mean, that's an interesting way to look at it, because I think it can also be argued the other way and say the system is not working. Uh, that, right. that, yeah, that, right. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. My own confirmation bias coming in. Yeah, I, I want the Murag away. There's Your no confirmation <laughs> bias is wrong. I mean, it's not, I don't know. I mean, because, I mean, yeah, I mean, it could be looked at. This is very much a righteous conviction if you're on the side that Alec Murdoch did this. And I think most of us are, uh, you know, at least to a certain extent of, of he knew that what happened or, or that he knew of or who or what, if he not direct involved. Um, but if we're going to say that the system worked correctly, isn't the system designed though, that if there, this is the whole purpose of the hearing. Uh, if there is some sort of impropriety and the bar was set, I mean, the judge basically said we would need someone to say that their verdict was in fact influenced directly by Becky Hill and they got that. So it's like the points were made. The, the, <laughs> the, 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 the goal that's was my scored. Question because like, like what I read yesterday, I have it right here. And that's why I, I'm, a little, I'm a little confused on this one potentially, because I have right here, all the jurors testified. They stood by their verdict. They mm-hmm. were not swayed by anything Hill may have said. Are you, was there something different on that or? Well, the the fact one of the jurors in there flat out said no. They the it was juror number juror Z uh, is uh-huh. the one who who flat out said that my my decision was influenced by Becky Hill. And yes, Becky Hill did say these things to me. All the other jurors went along with the rest of the path, saying no. This was our verdict. We don't recall Becky saying these sort of things. But there's the one that is saying. That yes, in fact, I, I, my, my decision was influenced by Becky Hill. It wasn't really elaborated on very well. The it was kind of a I would say somewhat weak testimony. Um, at one point, they were even asked, um, "Are you?" Um, it, it was something the effect of, "Did she say anything else other than, uh, you know, uh, watch out uh, or, or keep an eye on on his his, right. mo- his motions, his movements, things of that nature." Um, 
in when I, did she say anything else? The question was, I, I don't, I don't really remember. Um, it was simply the facts that were stated was that yes, this influenced, I felt pressure, uh, from the other jurors and I felt pressure from Becky Hill, Becky Hill, almost painting it that he was already guilty. So right. it, it, she did at the, at the end of this, uh, or at the end of the actual trial, you know, when they ask, is this your verdict? She confirmed, yes, this is my verdict. So to be able to go back and change that now, uh, I, I guess does put into question the rules and the law. And I mean, if we're going to be able to do this right now and say that I'm, I, I was influenced or my, my decision would have been changed. I mean, you'd almost have to go back to every trial and go to every juror and say, Hey, is your opinion still the same um, now? Uh, or were you in, were you influenced? I mean, then you could almost reverse any trial if we're going to go down that road. Um, right. So I don't know. It, it's, it's a weird sticky gray area that that's really hard to get a grasp on what is right and what is wrong here. Very true. And from what I've read and what I'm taking this uh, take away from this is that she wouldn't have changed her decision in the verdict that she came up with, but yes, Becky Hill changed her thought process and how she engaged. And the way you laid it out there, I thought was really, really relevant to uh, Tony. And that is, the jurors were pressuring her or Becky Hill was pressuring her. What popped in my mind as you're saying that is yes. You know, when you're a jury of, of 12, you're communicating with each other. You're <laughs> yeah. collaborating to come. And so, yeah, there's going to be a lot of pressure. You're going to yeah. have dominant personalities. You're going to have non-dominant personalities. So my conjecture potentially is that the way the judge looked at Becky Hill in this case was, that she wasn't any more of an influence than another juror might have been mm -hmm. in the same situation. In other words, Becky Hill broke that, you know, that, you know, what are they called? The, the, the fourth dimension, whatever. Yeah. You know, like the fourth TV. wall. Yeah. The fourth, she broke that fourth wall that shouldn't have been broken between her and the jurors mm -hmm. and made herself, you know, as another juror, as a communication type person. Yeah. But at the bottom line, I think was that the juror, themselves did not said they did not change her verdict because of it. They changed her behavior and their thought process because of her, but just like they do with all the other jurors. Yeah. And I, I'm, I know I'm, I know I have my own leakage coming in here on this one um, because I'm just, I'm so glad we don't have to go through that trial again yeah. as of now, as of now, another appell, right. As another appellate's come up. I mean, I, I, I think it's, uh, it's hold your breath because this, he's got more opportunities to have this overturned. Um, and he's got it, great defense. He's got yeah. great defense, as we've seen, yeah. you know. So, yeah, who knows? It, 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 it's just it's such a strange area of of what, uh, you know, what constitutes uh, improprieties uh, in in the jury room. Uh, if we're going to say that feeling pressure from other jurors um, uh, or, or feeling pressure uh, that's going to influence your decision. That's what deliberations are. That's the right. whole point. I mean, to be like, there's pressure. I'm a snowflake. I can't handle the pressure. Like I, that's what, that's life. That's, that's the I've process. Been on juries. Yeah. I've, I've been a jurist, you know, <laughs> that, on, on big cases yeah. and, you know, doing my civic duty. And yeah, there, there is pressure in there. Yeah. There's people that want to go home. There's people who don't want to stay out here for three more days. I mean, it, it's, yeah, there are pressures on them. There, there's no doubt, you know, external pressures, internal pressures. Yeah. That's why there's 12. That's why. Yeah. And, and what, and what is wrong with the, I mean, we, we seem to be in a place in our world where uh, if there is pressure on someone or something, for some reason, it's looked at as this is, this is wrong. This is bad rather than this is life. This is how decisions are made. This is how we get to uh, a cohesive decision amongst a group of 12 um, so it, it's, it's a, it's a weird argument to be made, but it is certainly one that, that attempted to be made there. Sick of the ads? We opt to. Start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.